Hello everyone and welcome to the Prophecy Files Briefing. We're glad that you've joined us today and I hope that you will share out this short commentary on prophetic events that are happening all around the world on your social media. I know that there are many people that are wondering what is happening, what's the future going to be. And the Bible is very, very clear concerning these catastrophic, apocalyptic, the terms that are used, thrown around so flippantly today. These events are written about in the Word of God very clearly. God's plan is happening. While things look like, for some people, that they're falling apart, in God's mind and in His economy, everything is falling into place. It's very serious articles today that are dealing with nuclear war. You've been hearing a lot of that conversation concerning the possibilities of World War III and of course the conflicts that are happening all around the world are certainly uh, part of the biblically prophetic events that will take place uh, from now and into the future all the way to uh, the end of Revelation 19 where Jesus returns in the second coming at the Battle of Armageddon. But these events are certainly very troubling. And does the Bible have anything to say about nuclear events? Well, this article deals with the fact that the leader of Russia, Vladimir Putin, has sent a warning in recent months to the West, to the UN, to the United States, to the Ukraine, and others uh, that is escalating his nuclear rhetoric. He tells a group of senior officials that Russia would consider using nuclear weapons if it was attacked by any state with conventional weapons. The article goes on to say that uh, he said that Russia would consider using nuclear weapons if Moscow received reliable information about the start of a massive launch of missiles, aircraft, or drones against it. Now certainly this is dealing specifically, and it does in this article, with uh, Mr. Zelensky in the Ukraine uh, requesting the ability to uh, launch and have the effect of the missiles and asking for missiles to be able to launch them into Russia, even into Moscow. And so this warning is very troubling and it's quite disturbing over the fact that we have nuclear uh, weaponry that are, are not only available and are small uh, in, in contrast to what used to be in gigantic missiles now that there can be uh, nuclear devices uh, that are as small as a briefcase or even smaller perhaps. But uh, it's very interesting that this is happening at the same time right in the Middle East where we've just seen Israel bombing Iran and primarily you're getting the news that it is uh, missile sites or military sites that are taking place. But according to one journalist who is there, uh, certainly on the ground in Israel and in this particular article, it is stating this, listen carefully, Israel hit Iran's secret nuclear sites, but no one will admit it. We've seen a lot of activity and the destruction of Iran's air defense missile systems and even their missile production facilities. But this article states that perhaps in the middle of all of that, that the Iranian nuclear sites were included in this past Saturday's attack, but no one will admit it. The United States, Iran, or the International Atomic Energy Agency that's in charge of those sites because they have not been declared as actual nuclear sites. It's very interesting in this article, and I won't take time to read it all to you, but listen carefully to one statement. It states that the United States administration could not uh, object publicly to what's taken place, according to the journalist, because these are undeclared nuclear sites that perhaps have been hit. Likewise, the uh, IAEA would not be able to admit it because they would have to say it was their failure, this article goes on to say. It's very interesting at the conclusion of this article, it states the Israeli government uh, spokesman and official, and he made this statement, quote, Israel knows everything there is to know about Iran, including all sites of threats of interest to this country namely Israel. Now, what does the Bible have to say concerning that? Well, it's not silent concerning wars and rumors of wars and the activity of uh, war that takes place, especially in the last days. This is what the book of Zechariah says in Zechariah 14 and 12. 
And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh, listen carefully to this description. It is actually the description of what takes place in a nuclear blast. He says, Zechariah does, their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet and their eyes shall consume away in their holes and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. That's none other than a nuclear blast, my friends. Matthew 24, 22 says, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. In other words, the Lord will return before humanity is completely wiped out by the use of nuclear weapons. Second Peter chapter three, verse 10 through 13 makes an emphasis from Zechariah and it says this, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, describing a nuclear blast to me. And the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. This is a description of nuclear activity without a doubt. Isaiah 24, verse 19 and 20, the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. And finally, in Revelation 8, verse 10 and 11, and the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of the waters. This is the description, and it goes on to describe the events of the last days during the tribulation period when certainly, without a doubt, nuclear weapons or something uh, certainly close to that will be used not only by the Antichrist, but will be used by the nations of the world. And unless God intervenes in that situation, the Bible says all of humanity will be gone. But because God loves his people and loves his creation, he's going to return, according to the book of Revelation 19, Jesus leading the way on a white horse as the armies of the world are gathered together in the valley of Megiddo, there in Israel, to battle one another and the Antichrist. And the divine intervention of God is going to take place as he returns on a white horse with all the saints with him. These things are written about in Revelation 19, and you can read how that his intervention comes with a more powerful uh, weapon from the eyes and the mouth of God that will destroy the armies of the Antichrist and set Jesus Christ on the throne of his father David in Jerusalem. It's a powerful book, the Bible is, and I can assure you it's describing the times that we're living in right now. Pastor, these are fearful times. Well, the Bible said it would take place. Well, uh, they're talking about nuclear bombs in World War III. These things are written about in the Word of God from the ancients. I can tell you that no matter what's happening, God is still in control. From the words of Daniel, there is a God in heaven and he is still in control of all things. So trust him today. Live for the Lord, reach to the lost, and cause people to know the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And the kingdom of our God will come to this earth just like he said. God bless you for joining us today on Prophecy Files Briefing. We thank you for each time you tune in. Share this out, please, and let other people know that the word of God has the answers in these last days. And until then, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.